Welcome to 2014 and welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight and it's Thursday, January the 2nd, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, why do two social security buildings need nearly 30 million apiece in protection? Then, email confirms Bank of America's social media spying and how the California coast has been affected since Fukushima. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Chicken neck weakness is like a god now. Being a huge jellyfish slacker who looks like a fried egg in a chair. Well, this last year we saw news break that internet and phone companies are partnering with the NSA. And of course we know that brick and mortar retailers are also. Now we see more evidence of corporate informants. This is from an email that was leaked. This is a story by Mikhail Thalen on InfoWars. Email confirms Bank of America has a social media trolling spy team. Now this is Bank of America's global corporate security vice president. She's writing to the Washington State Patrol. She says, if you find any intel on anarchists or Occupy protesters, please let me know. I will most likely find it first as social media trolling is not what the Washington State Patrol does best, but Bank of America has a team of 20 people, and that's all they do all day. And then they pass it to us around the country. Now, remember that a couple of years ago, Bank of America was the point of the spear in the government attacks against WikiLeaks and those who had published the Manning documents. And they were cooperating with Palantir to try to shut down WikiLeaks. But it's not just the corporate spying that's going on. We also see old-fashioned cor crony corporatism that's being put out right in our face by those like Chrysler Corporation. Look at this news, it's just breaking. The great Italian auto bailout, courtesy of US taxpayers. This is from Open Market and they say, the Obama administration literally gave away ownership of one of the big three American auto man manufacturers to an Italian car maker who was struggling with labor and productivity issues that were worse than those that drove Chrysler to near liquidation. In the 2009 deal overseen by the Obama administration, Fiat paid no money. How about that? No money down to get an automobile company. No money to acquire its initial 20% stake in Chrysler, only contributing some intellectual property instead. Fiat would later pay $2.2 billion to raise its stake in the company to 58.5%, and now they have got 100% of it. We now see that the U.S. taxpayers have paid to move Chrysler overseas to export those jobs. It is a perfect example of multinational corporations rape, ripping off and raping the U.S. taxpayer as well as the entire country. Now, we see that Obamacare is actually the same thing. Obamacare is just another form of corporate cronyism, of fascism. But there's a, a segment of society that's starting to wake up to this, evidently, and it's a hopeful sign that the millennials are not having any of it. A poll, recent poll, shows that 56% of Americans between the ages of 18 and 29 reject Obamacare, compared to only 39% of that age group that support the law. Moreover, the so-called millennial, millennial respondents believe that the law will degrade the quality of health care and significantly raise prices. Well, of course it is, and especially for that group. When the insurance companies set rates, they take into consideration risk. And of course, this group has much lower risk than older groups. They should pay much less, but the burden is being shifted onto them. They're being forced to buy Cadillac insurance policies just like the rest of us are. And even if they opt out, of course, they're still going to have a fine. The fine is much lower than what they would have to pay for these Cadillac insurance policies with many aspects that they don't use. But even if they do opt out, the entire society is going to be hit with over $479 billion in new taxes, as we pointed out last week from a study done by one congressman. Now, the feds are also preparing for the worst from the boomers. It looks like the boomers may be kind of angry with what they've got coming down the pike as well. Paul Joseph Watson noticed on FedBiz.op that there's a solicitation to spend $58 million for security on just two buildings. Now, this follows a trend of DHS looking to hire armed guards with top security clearances in Wisconsin and Minnesota, and an $80 million outlay on armed guards to protect government buildings in upstate New York that prompted Fox News' Neil Cavuto to speculate that the feds were preparing for violence in response to cutbacks in the food stamp program. Well, it's not just the food stamp program, of course. It's the baby boomers who are now reaching the ages of retirement, reaching the point at which the government is going to have to pay out money that it doesn't have, that it never had.
because, of course, Social Security is nothing but a Ponzi scheme, a Ponzi scheme that is many, many orders of magnitude larger than anything that Bernie Madoff ever did. And it's not just the economy that's dying. We also see that fish in the Pacific Ocean are dying as well. In another study, and this is from Natural News, they broke this, Dead Sea creatures are covering 98% of the ocean floor off of California coast, up from just 1% before Fukushima. A new study recently published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences recently discovered that the number of dead sea creatures blanketing the floor of the Pacific is higher than it has been in the 24 years that they've been monitoring this. In March 2012, less than 1% of the seafloor beneath Station M, they say, was covered in Dead Sea salps. But now, more than 98% of it is covered in decomposing organisms. Now, other ocean research stations are reporting the same data. And of course, the location and the timing of this massive die-off in the ocean points the finger at Fukushima as we see this massive amount of radiation that continues to pour into the ocean and is making its way slowly to the west coast of the United States. Now, another report released today shows that of the thousands of people murdered by the Bush and Obama administration's drone programs, 25% of them are civilians. A study released by the Council on Foreign Relations suggests that out of the 3,520 people killed by U.S. drone strikes over the last 12 years, 457, or 11 percent, were civilians. But another monitoring organization suggests one out of every four drone strike victims are civilian. The Bureau of Investigative Journalism thinks the deadliest attacks were in Pakistan alone and claims that 3,091 people were killed there since 2004, and just over 680 were civilians. That's 22 percent of deaths. America has continually tried to downplay the collateral damage happening in Pakistan, and this is quite evident in that report released by the CFR. Actual figures are classified, so we may never have an accurate count of civilian deaths. But what we do know is that the Obama administration has no problem tinkering with the truth. CIA head and drone mastermind John Brennan said that in the last year, there hadn't been a single collateral death because of the exceptional proficiency, precision of the capabilities that we've been able to develop. A 2011 investigation by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism found at least 10 individual attacks in which 45 or more civilians appear to have died. Policy Mike reported in 2012 that 50 civilians are killed for every one terrorist, citing the controversial CIA double tap policy, which deliberately targets those who show up after a drone strike, including rescuers and even funeral goers. We only authorize a particular operation against a specific individual if we have a high degree of confidence that the individual being targeted is indeed the terrorist we are pursuing. In fact, less than 2% of the targets in Pakistan since 2004 have been high-profile targets. The rest are children, civilians, and alleged combatants. One of those strategic drone strikes that the government likes to brag about took out an entire wedding party in Yemen by mistake. The president of I'm Really Good at Killing People cried crocodile tears for the victims of the Sandy Hook shooting while signing death orders to kill innocent children overseas. And we're all parents. But they're all our children. This is our first task, caring for our children. It's our first job. If we don't get that right, we don't get anything right. That's how, as a society, we will be judged. And by that measure, can we truly say, as a nation, that we're meeting our obligations? Can we honestly say that we're doing enough to keep our children, all of them, safe from harm? And although President Obama has been harshly criticized for all of the secrecy surrounding the drone strike program, as well as what sort of criteria earns a terrorist a position on his kill list, this kill list, or the list of terrorism suspects whose assassinations President Obama personally authorizes, has been expanded and institutionalized. The institutionalization of the kill list means that no matter who is president, 
targeted drone strikes that are responsible for the deaths of scores of civilians will continue. And the problem with that is that drones are set to man the American skies en masse by 2015, and Congress hasn't even yet set the guidelines by which drones can target civilians here on American soil. I think we should all judge as inadequate the president's response when he says he hasn't killed Americans in America yet, he doesn't intend to, but that he might. I don't think that that is a response that we should tolerate. What are the criteria for who will be killed? The FAA announced December 30th the six states where drone testing will take place. The sites will be based in Alaska, Nevada, New York, North Dakota, Texas, and Virginia. On The Alex Jones Show, Sherry Tenpenny laid out a drone vaccine delivery program designed by Bill Gates to be forced upon the American people. You know how they're talking now about all these drones and like with uh, Amazon delivering boxes. I just saw some kids at some um, university that just got funded by the Gates Foundation to develop a drone to devel deliver vaccines to locations where they can't get into with, with uh, World Health Organization workers. Um, Gates has been working for a while at this whole concept of a malaria vaccine with mosquitoes, delivering by mosquitoes. Now, what if you get bit 10 times? Does that mean you get 10 doses of the vaccine? I mean, it's just insanity. I think about these pictures. You know, sometimes you have seen those pictures in, in the old days of Albert Einstein with the gray hair that's all messed up across his head. They just look like this wild, wild uh, uh, scientist. And I think that there's the, this issue with technology that because we can, the assumption is made that we should, when I think that in many cases we should not. Given that in just a few years, drones are set to police the American skies, the question is, how long will they remain unarmed? Well, whenever there's a long holiday weekend, the government always uses that as an opportunity to sneak some things in. We have a report about that coming up right after the break. And later in the program, we're going to have an interview with Gerald Salenti, and he's going to give us his trends that he sees in 2014. Stay tuned. I'll be honest with you. We're at a major crossroads. My radio show has almost become passe for many because all of the incredibly radical sounding things that we've talked about in the last 18 years on air are now public knowledge. Almost everything we've discussed is now being reported by mainstream. As this tyranny is admitted, as Congress has hearings about Obama being a dictator, basically, if we don't educate the general public about this now and explain to them that if the precedent is set for the office of the presidency to be dictatorial and autocratic, that will be passed on to future generations. And that's why the new January 2014 edition of InfoWars magazine is now out. And I think it's probably the best cover we have ever had. We see Obama as the classical third world dictator, and that basically is what he is becoming. And there are five different articles about the transference of power and the degeneration of our republic into a bureaucratic dictatorship with the president as the dictatorial head. There's a bunch of other gun control articles, NSA stories. I'm really proud of the first issue of 2014. Guaranteed, two or three people that you hand them to will end up reading it. And even if somebody else doesn't read it, they'll leave it laying somewhere and somebody else will read it. This is a very effective way to wake people up. It's a great tool. Instead of costing $10, $15, $20 like a book, you can get it as low as a dollar a piece in bulk to get out to your friends and family. So that's InfoWarsStore.com to subscribe to the final year of subscriptions. And you can always continue to buy them in bulk at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Well, do you remember that Obama signed the NDAA indefinite detention on New Year's Eve two years ago? Well, now we've got a district court judge who is trying to give legal cover to the government to create a constitution-free zone within 100 miles of the border. This came down on Tuesday. This is District Judge Edward Corman in New York, 
and he ruled three years after the ACLU filed a suit. He argued that the area 100 miles inland falls under a border exemption. Well, you know, I looked in the Fourth Amendment, and I didn't see anything in there about a border exemption. I did see stuff in there about people who violate the Constitution, people who are traitors like this judge who thinks that he can modify the Constitution with his fiats. But look at this. This was also pointed out by the ACLU. They noted that almost two-thirds of the population, 197 million people, live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. That would include large cities like New York, Washington, Boston, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Miami, and dozens of other metropolitan areas that are now in an exemption zone that this judge pretends that he's carved out. This judge's ruling has no authority. But of course, this government has a lot of power. We need to take that power away from a government like this, away from a judge like this. This is the same judge that back in May ruled that women of any age, any age, could purchase abortion pills without a prescription over the counter. Now, it remains to be seen if Judge Corman is going to feel any heat for his decision, if you're going to put any heat on him. But people are putting heat on Toby Keith for what he's doing in his restaurant. Country music star Toby Keith is in the news once again, this time with his latest hit on the Second Amendment. He opened a new store in the gun-friendly state of Virginia with a prominent sign telling his customers that there are no guns allowed. As a private business owner, Keith does have the right to regulate firearms in his place of business, doing what's best for himself and his customers. But as these varying Facebook posts show, his customers seem to be split down the middle on whether the decision is right or wrong. Regardless of what the controlled media tells you about gun-free zones, there have been numerous instances where concealed carriers or even open carriers have saved the lives of themselves and others. And now a school board in Georgia has approved the use of rifles for their school resource officers. And while I'm not an advocate of shooting rifles indoors, I think this is a great deterrent to any would-be attackers. Proper armaments, along with the proper training, can go a long ways to save lives in a gun-friendly zone. Every one of the plans in the United States and schools, emergency plans, are to lock the doors and hide the kids. Well, that was disturbing to us because we're 30 minutes from law enforcement. We had no way to protect ourselves, and there wasn't anybody around to take care of us. We were our first responders. Right. I came up with a plan, and the plan, you know, has been on the news a lot. It's pretty self-explanatory. We, they have to have a CHL. We uh, approve them. Uh, the board approves them individually. We undergo some extra training, and then we use frangible ammunition, which, you know, breaks apart when it hits hard objects. Make sure where you take your friends and family is not a victim disarmament zone. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the amount of the ocean floor covered by dead fish has soared from just 1% to 98%. And of course, that's in the Pacific Ocean and in a time frame that looks like it corresponds to Fukushima. And at the same time, we just learned the government has ordered 14 million doses of potassium iodide, and they want that in just 30 days. So Anthony Gucciardi contacted someone at the federal government who put that order out. We'll have that report following the break. We'll also be talking to Gerald Salenti about his predictions for 2014. Stay tuned. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with fluoride shield. I use fluoride shield every day. Secure your fluoride shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. 
and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. Well, it's our first show of 2014, and like all of you, we're wondering what to look forward to this next year. What are the trends? And of course, the person to turn to is Gerald Salenti of Trends Journal. He's probably got his finger on the pulse of this better than anybody else. So joining us today is Gerald Salenti. And Gerald, what do you see happening in 2014? What are the big trends? Well, I think with all the golf that uh, Obama's playing, he'll be on the PGA Tour after he leaves office. So. <laughs> I can't believe this stuff. It's like every time I see this guy, he's either playing golf, playing basketball, or, or eating a Slurpee. But anyway, uh, as we're going into 2014, the news is in front of us for all to see. But not a lot of people are paying attention. And I'll tell you why. One of the tricks they do with trying to keep you in the dark is they report information at times when people aren't watching or listening. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah. this is from New Year, uh, Christmas Eve, Financial Times. Concerns mount over China cash squeeze. China's cash squeeze has worsened despite central banks' repeated attempts to calm markets with emergency money injections. So who was reading that on Christmas Eve? The same people who weren't reading the Financial not Times on New Year's Eve. Fears after China's key debt level soars 70%. <laughs> and then you keep looking into the papers. The Wall Street Journal, New Year's Eve. Sharks smell blood in China waters. Yep. 40% people are paying interest rates and trying to service their loans from the so-called shadow banking network. Wow. New York Times. China says local level debt soars, stirring fear. Here we go again. What day is this? Oh, another New Year's Eve story. China faces mounting local debt. And then you look at the current events forming future trends, and you look at today's news. China manufacturing index falls, along with growth risks. Where's the economy heading? You look at housing prices in China in December in the major cities, they went up 28%. You have a bubble there that's out of control. They're doing the same thing over there like they're doing over here. They just call it something different. We have dollars, they have yuan. And they're pumping trillions of them into the system to keep it floating. And then when you look at their GDP, uh, 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 debt to GDP levels, it's over 200% in China. So where's the economy going? Simply, look what happened at the end of this year in December. The Fed decides they're going to begin their tapering, which means they're not going to be shoveling in as much cheap dough as they were before. What's the response? Hey, happy new year. Market's down today, eh, about 135 points. Hey, look at, look at oil prices, boom, down two and three bucks. Hey, gold is going up, wonder why. It's very simple. The more they cut back, the more they try to rein in this wild market, the higher interest rates are going. 
Look at the 10-year bond now. It's over 3%. Highest level since July of 2011. The higher the interest rates, the deeper the economy goes into recession. So here's our forecast. 2014, more Fed tapering in January. You can see what's going on with the tapering already. You see a slowdown in China. Every, you know what's out of the news? What's out of the news is the lousy retail sales for Christmas time. Hey, <laughs> boy, they make a big deal out of Black Friday. But when the numbers don't come in so good, and all the prostitutes have lockjaw. Hey, you want to buy a car? I'll tell you what, 0% down, 0% interest. You don't have a good credit rating? Don't worry, call this number. We'll find a dealer near you. You want to look at the housing market? You're already seeing new applications for mortgages going down. Our forecast. They, rate, they put more tapering on the table in January. The economy slows down worldwide. It's all, they got to do something in China as well. They're all going to start raising interest rates, although everybody says they're not. They have to. If you're going to cut back on the dough flooding in, interest rates are going to go up. It's supply and demand, period, paragraph. As the interest rates go up, the economy t starts to tank. So what we're saying is, they're going to come out with another new scheme after the slowdown really hits everybody between the eyes and they can no longer avoid it. When they'll come out with another name, they'll make call it, you know, quantitative reflux <laughs> initiative or some stupid BS name that the Fed chair will make up. And they'll keep pumping dough into the economy and that's when you're going to start seeing Gold and silver prices and precious metals start rising again as they try to salvage the economy that's only been pumped up. All of the world equity markets have only been pumped up because of the cheap dough flooding in. That's the way we see the economy. That's where it's heading, and it's global. So th do you see this as being more like uh, 2008 or being more like the Great Depression when this bubble bursts? You, you believe this bubble is going to burst sometime this year, that they can't control it? They can, yeah, we believe, again, you know, that's absent schemes undreamed of. And the schemes, you never know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. We have to be very, very clear here. We're talking about sociopaths and psychopaths in control. So they'll do anything. Hey, how about a nice little war? That'll get yes. your mind off things. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a part of, of your, that was a part, excuse me, that was part of your forecast last year, big part of it. And uh, they certainly tried to make that come through, but you also talked last year about the Great Awakening 2.0. How do you, that, that pretty much came to uh, fruition, didn't it? It's going on globally. Mm -hmm. Look, let's go around the world really quickly. Hey, how about what's going on in Thailand? Wonderful time, hundreds of thousands, millions of people in the streets, and they're not leaving. Let's go over, the, over to uh, Ukraine. I love it. They want to join the EU and they're out on the streets. Yeah, join the EU. You could be like Greece or <laughs> Spain. You like that one better? How about a little Portugal <clears throat> and some Ireland stuck in there? And how about Italy with 40% youth unemployment? But you have none nonetheless, you have demonstrations going on there. You have demonstrations going on in Bulgaria and Romania. You have demonstrations going on in Cambodia. The people are tied to being slaves and they're revolting against the dictatorship that's been in power now for three decades. Then we could move over the wonderful time-limited, scope-limited kinetic action brought to you by our Nobel Peace Prize winner Obama and Hillary Clinton and Samantha Powers and Susan Rice. Libya, civil war, all bets are off. The entire region's being destabilized, including, of course, now in Lebanon and not to forget Syria. And then you look what's going on in Saudi Arabia. They're having a lot of problems trying to quell them. And by the way, people are, I love the, the king, the king. Can anybody call the guy a dictator? What am I, six years old? Once upon a time, there was a king, a prince, and a queen. The guy's a dictator, and a lot of people hate him. It's flooding 
cross-border between Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And then Bahrain, that problem's not going away either. And then we could take a trip down to Central Africa. You don't like it over there? Let's go to Congo. Oh, they just slaughtered another couple of dozen people yesterday. And of course, the Sudan is up for grabs. And then you look at all the protests going on in Italy, the pitchfork movement. You look what the progress... Populist movements are taking over throughout Europe. 25% of the people in the European Parliament want to get off the euro. So yes, the awakening is happening, and the awakening is this. Pick your country. The chances are, nine out of 10 times, you got a lunatic in control. And you think I'm making it up? Now the big news over in France is they're going to bring back Sarkozy. It wasn't bad enough before. Let's bring them back for another round of war, rape, and pillage. Gerald, hang on right there. We're, gonna, we're out of time for our regular program, but I want to continue this briefly right after the break. Can you hit, stay with us? Sure can. Great, thanks. Well, that's the end of our show, but if you're a Prison Planet TV subscriber, stick around. We've got a lot more of this interview for Gerald Salenti forecasting what he sees happening in 2014. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Welcome back to our Prison Planet TV subscribers. We're talking to Gerald Salenti as what he sees happening in this new year. And of course, Obamacare is on everybody's mind. Well, one of the big things that happened this year, of course, is Obamacare. We saw the disastrous rollout of the healthcare.gov site. What do you think is going to happen as we move forward? Is it going to continue to evolve? And are we going to continue to have more dictates uh, from Obama changing his law arbitrarily? And what's the impact on the economy that you see? Well, first, the impact on the economy. It's costing everybody, mostly everybody more, particularly the middle class. I mentioned before about Christmas retail sales. You saw the slowdown. You saw the slowdown when Obama, the, one of the lyingest presidents we've had, you know, uh, with along with read my lips, no new taxes. I didn't have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. I smoked, but I didn't inhale. Saddam Hussein has <laughs> weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. And if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. And if you elect me, we're not going to raise taxes, except, of course, those Social Security payroll taxes. So when they raise those, you saw the impact on retail. Now, with Obamacare, you're going to see even a bigger impact on retail, because here's the deal. The deal is this. Median household income has fallen between 8.3% and 8.6% since 2008. Income increased only 0.2% in November after falling 0.1% in October. Now, with people paying more for Obamacare, less dough for the consumer to spend in retail. Now, having said that, you're also going to start, we're forecasting a continuing decline, absent, of course, a geopolitical incident, in oil prices. And what you're seeing with the deal trying to be made with Iran, as we look at it, it all has to do with money. Because Iran is going to be a great place to invest in, and it's also going to flood more oil onto the market, and is also an excess already building as China's economy slows down, and they're the second largest user of imported oil, going back to Obamacare. It's going to continue to be an unmitigated failure. Never in the history of the United States, outside of the losing wars, has anything failed so greatly as this program. Mm -hmm. And what they will continue to do as it fails, they'll continue to force us to continue to buy into a failing program that will do two things, cost us more and give us less. The only people it's going to help are the multinationals, the huge firms that are buying up everything throughout the health sector, whether it's CVS or the mega hospitals. You name it, anybody having to do with the bigness of what Obamacare brings is going to benefit from it and we're all going to pay for it. 
Yeah, this seems like there's a massive transfer of wealth, of course, from the from middle America to the corporations, but it's also setting up a kind of a generational warfare because this is really falling heavily on the backs of the millennials who are supposedly going to support this. So it's, a, it's also going to be perceived as a transfer of wealth from one generation to the other. How do you see that shaking out? What do you see happening with the boomers? Well, the boomers are going to get the, the hardest. You know, the youngest of the boomers just mm -hmm. turned 50. Mm -hmm. The oldest of us are 67. So you've got a lot of them in there that are, you know, have a lot of years before they get to Medicare. And they're going to be paying very heavily for this. Yes. Particularly people with families. But with millennials, you know, when you're young, you don't think you're going to get sick. So, you know, and they're, of course, depending on the young people to fund it because the older people are going to be eating through the, the profits of it. And I don't believe they're going to get the millennials to, to sign up because, I'll tell you why, the jobs stink. That's right. 90% of the jobs that were created in 2013 are temporary jobs. Mm -hmm. When you look at college grad jobs, 50% of them are paying high school equivalent wages. You didn't, in other words, you only need a high school degree to get the job that you have that put you $60,000, $80,000 in debt. That's going to take you 20 years to pay off. So you're going to start not seeing a lot of the millennials scream and yell too much. Where we're going to hear a lot of yelling and screaming from them is the jobs stink. Yes. And then you're looking, by the way, as you go globally, you're looking at massive levels of depression coming out of the millennial generation. And a lot of that has to do with Obamacare here domestically because they've made, they've skyrocketed the expense of hiring somebody, putting them on the payroll full time. And of course, they, they defined that down to just 30 hours a week. Exactly. And you really touched on it when you were talking about the corporations getting bigger. I want to make this 100% clear. Everyone should stop using the term globalization. It's multinationalization. It's the multinationals have taken over everything. You look at who owns all these companies. It's hedge funds. It's it's private equity groups. It's multinationals. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as Walmarts everywhere. They were down in the south in a couple of states. They used to have these quaint little things. People that wanted to start their own businesses could. They yeah. could open up a hardware store. Mm -hmm. But no more because you can't compete with Home Depot or Lowe's. They had stationary stores. No more of that. We have Staples and Office Depot. We have Target. We have you, one after another. They've gobbled up. It's a multinational takeover. So with Obamacare and the way all the rules are being rewritten, and by the way, that's what they've done. They've killed the Robinson-Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, and, of course, the Glass-Steagall Act that allows all this to happen. So the people are going to be earning less and paying more for everything that they use unless, unless they rise up, they stand up, they speak out and say we've had enough of the corrupt system. We want to restore America to the way it used to be. Yes, and of course the Trans-Pacific Partnership is Exhibit A and all of that doubling down on that, and they're a little bit behind schedule. They wanted to get that put in by the end of 2014. Hopefully we can turn that back like we did the war in Syria. I'm just concerned. I don't see people in the streets like they were after the TARP. Uh, they were angry in Washington. I don't see them taken to the streets, even after the revelations of the NSA, even after we see the massive failures of Obamacare. Do you see that happening this year? No, I don't either. And, mm -hmm. and going back, when you talk about the NSA, I'm disgusted with these judges that are making these rulings. Who are these political hacks? I'll tell you who they are. They're treasonous. Mm -hmm. They are destroying everything that this country was founded upon. The founding fathers were against foreign entanglements. The founding fathers strengthened our Fourth Amendment rights. And they have raped us of everything. These politicians and these judges should be tried for treason. So why aren't the people taking to the streets? Mm -hmm. Look at the police. Yeah. They'll bash your head open if you yeah. get out of line. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens in a fascist country. And when I say fascism, I'm not just throwing that word out there. Hey, right. you know the big news today? 
Italy just is buying up, Fiat's buying up Chrysler, the rest of it. That's right. We the people bail them out. In capitalism, there are no bailouts. In capitalism, you rise and fall on your own merits. In fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers where the slimy politicians take our money and give it to their buddies just cost us $1.5 billion so that the Italians could buy out Chrysler. So in a fascist state, that's the way police act because they are now the wise guys for the politicians and the big industry that controls them. Now, you were talking about the problems that are on the horizon with China, massive interest rates. It looks like an economic bubble is about ready to burst there. I think a lot of what's going on with these wars, if you, as you pointed out, is that they're trying to distract the public from what's happening domestically. We see this as a pattern that's gone on throughout history. We see last year's war in Syria. There was absolutely no reason for them to push that except to distract the American public. What do you think is going to happen in China if the bubble bursts? You think they're going to push for these wars that they've been uh, bellicosely talking about in the Chinese press? I don't think China's going to push for it. I think Japan is. There's another lunatic mm. over there, that guy Abe. I yeah. mean, you want to get people really angry? Keep going to that shrine that both the, the North and South Koreans hate and, and the Chinese hate. And they hate it because there are so-called war criminals from World War II buried there. Mm -hmm. And you look at what Japan is doing with building up its military. And look at the new deal they just pulled off in Okinawa with, with, the, with the Japanese. Hey, how many years is this war over? What are we doing over there? Yeah. And now they're pushing American troops into this pivot Asia over into Australia? <laughs> you know, going back, oh, how about that new aircraft carrier we, we're building? The Gerald R. Ford. Yeah, 13 billion bucks. <laughs> so no, I see it as I see it as more the United States, Japan. Oh, we just saw uh, uh, Ketchup King Kerry over there. You know, the the guy that married the heir to the highest fortune over in the Philippines, making a deal with them to bring more troops into the Philippines. So I see the unrest happening in the Middle East, and I see it being provoked by Japan, not China. And anybody that pushes China, they're out of their minds. Mm -hmm. Because this is a whole different world game over here. Oh, and by the way, you know, it's got, you know another reason why I think that it's going to be Japan that starts getting the people's minds off it? Two reasons. Abenomics, the trillions of yen that they've pumped into the system, again, only pumping up their stock market, barely boosting their economy, they got another little problem on their hands. It's called Fukushima. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when this thing, that is going to be an explosive issue in so many different ways. Japan is being threatened, as is the West Coast and so many other neighboring countries that nobody ever talks about. I think that war is going to be used by... Abe over there to get the Japanese people's minds off the bigger problem, yes. and that is they're getting radiated to death. Hey, yeah. have any sushi lately? That's right. That's right. Well, I would I would say you're pretty bearish on 2014. Then you're looking for gold and silver to go high, but everything else you're looking pretty pessimistic about it. Would that be safe to say? I think it's safe to say on one end, but the other end there's always that human spirit. And when you look around the world, there are populist movements going on everywhere. In the United States, they're actually calling it a populist movement because the Democrats want to raise the minimum wage. <laughs> That's not a populist movement. You look at the numbers that just came out, how they just, the billionaires just got, a, what, 13 more trillion in 2013. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to start seeing breakdowns of system and new ones being reborn. And of all places to look, Cast your eyes over to India. They just had an election. The Common Man Party, out of nowhere, won. Hmm. And they're making the major issue that they're promoting is to end the corruption. If they can do it in India, we could do it here. We do not have a representative form of government. 
we have the Democrats and the Republicans. Mm -hmm. They represent the most powerful and the people that give them the most, the most dough. And again, I, call, I rather call them the Bloods and the Crips because they're a gang and they're murderous. They start wars, continue. Hey, how about a drone for lunch? How about <laughs> robbing more of our money and giving it to your buddies? How about what they've done with these record low interest rates where people can no longer save money and are being forced to gamble in the stock market? We need a new system. As long as the current one continues, the future, the handwriting is written all over the wall of 2014. It's up to the individuals. Well, we've got rising interest rates, we've got rising taxes, but as we saw last year when the people stood up, even though they didn't take to the street, we were able to push back on the Syrian war. So on that positive note, I guess we'll see what happens in 2014, and we'll be checking in with you for new developing trends. Thank you so much, Gerald Salente. Thank you, and Happy New Year to you and everyone listening. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, it's Gerald Salente from TrendsJournal.com. Now, if you want to keep up with the breaking news as it's happening, a great way to do that and to support our operation is with a subscription to Prison Planet TV. And right now we have a holiday special where you can get five months for free. Great time to sign up, great time to pass this around to other people, to let them know what's happening, to wake them up. We need people to be woken up, as Gerald was talking about. That's essential to roll back the negative things that we see happening and breaking on the horizon. We've seen some successes last year, but we need to see a lot more people woken up. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. It was revealed yesterday that the Department of Health and Human Services was buying up about 14 million doses of potassium iodide, which is, of course, used for nuclear disasters to block the uptake of radioactive isotopes. Now, the thing was, we found out about this through news tips from some insiders about two, three days ago. And I wanted to make sure, as did Alex and Paul Joseph Watson, that all of this checked out. It wasn't a routine purchase. It wasn't just a fluke or anything like that. And it was real on the Fed Biz Ops website, which, of course, is a federal government website. Now, we looked through all of the information and talked to some individuals inside the department and yes, we found out that this purchase was indeed bizarre, but specifically, we were told that this looked like a purchase around the same time of the Fukushima incident in 2011. And this is what concerned me. This is what prompted me to release the information to look into it further. And Paul Joseph Watson organically was also doing the same thing the entire time looking at the news tips, looking at the insider information in order to release this with full-blown information overload as to what's going on. Now, I am going to call here, recorded live, the individual, the purchasing agent responsible for the acquisition of this potassium iodide right here. We're going to call him and I'm going to ask him a few key things. I'm going to ask him, number one, why are they purchasing 14 million doses of iodide, potassium iodide? And the thing is, a good government, a real government, a smart government would purchase potassium iodide, or more importantly, they would actually purchase nascent atomic iodine, but potassium iodide is toxic, but in an event of an emergency, nuclear emergency, it is good because you would die otherwise. So a smart government would purchase a form of iodine for its citizens and encourage everyone else to do the same. So I'm actually saying that's a good thing. But they're going behind the scenes and doing this, getting their own stockpiles of potassium iodide, because 14 million doses isn't that, ma isn't that much. That's military level or federal government level. They could help those individuals, because remember, you'll take multiple doses over weeks or months or whatever. So they're going behind the scenes and purchasing this. I'm also going to ask if it's because of Fukushima and this individual or the agency's thoughts about Fukushima. Top scientists now say that it will threaten humanity for thousands of years. They say that if it blows up and has a meltdown, which the 1,500 rods, every single one they extract, has an opportunity to do that, how they have uh, homeless people now cleaning it up, and what their thoughts are on that. And I'm also going to ask them, you know, if they support potassium iodide and think we should all get some form of iodine, whether it's nascent, atomic, or whatever, which is, like I said, the real thing a government should be doing. So why don't we go ahead right now and set up the call line and talk to this individual. Health and Human Services Procurement, Tim Bouchelle. 
Hey, how's it going? My name is Anthony Gucciardi. How are you? I'm very well. Great. I was just inquiring about the potassium iodide, the 14 million doses of potassium iodide on uh, Fed BizOps. I was wondering what you yeah. can tell me about that. Um, we're a, I'm with the Department of Health and Human Services, and we're a medical supply and pharmaceutical depot, and it's one of the items that we stock. We stock over 4,000. Well, I see 14 million doses. Is that re routine? Do you guys usually get 14 million? Because uh, someone I spoke to from the organization said that's a little bizarre. Uh, no, it's given uh, how robust that material is. It's got seven years dating. I mean, it's uh, no, that's that's. I mean, we leverage our buying power that way using taxpayer money. I mean, it, that's the um, that's the best deal we could get. So no, that's not out of the ordinary. So I mean, you I bought, go ahead. I bought millions of doses of flu. You know, um, what uh, in June? So no, flu shot. Uh, millions of doses of the flu shot. Mm-hmm. So you're not stockpiling the potassium iodide for any particular reason? No. Well, let me ask you a no, question. Do you have any concerns about Fukushima, the fact that, you know, it is I, melting you know down? I, I have no um, idea. No, I have no, no idea anything about that. I, I just I purchased material for the federal government. There's no, there's no hidden agenda here. So you don't actually know why you're buying it? Uh, goodbye. Oh, wow. Well... What's interesting is that he wouldn't, he, he, he acted as if it was a routine purchase. And then when I actually asked him what was going on, he said, well, I don't know anything. I just purchased for the federal government. Why don't we call him back one more time? Just one more time. We don't want to get into harassment territory. Just one more time. And I want to ask him to clarify his statement on the fact that he just buys for the federal government. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't care about Fukushima. They're just buying tons of iodine and potassium iodide just to, just to stockpile it, just like they're buying billions of bullets just to help the taxpayer save money. That's why they're buying billions of rounds, uh, billions of rounds of ammunition. That's why they're buying 14 million doses of potassium iodide, to help the taxpayer save money. Tim Bouchel, Health and Human Services Procurement. Hey, how's it going? This is Anthony again. Sorry to call you uh, once more. I just really wanted to ask you a question. As a public servant, you know, people like myself paying you to serve us, I wanted to ask you to clarify your statement that you just work for the federal government, you know, not that you, sh you don't have to talk to me, you hung up on me, you just work for the federal government, you just work for me, and you don't actually know why you're buying 14 million doses of potassium iodide, and that's fine, I just wanted you to clarify that statement to me. Uh, because I've actually spoken to government insiders who actually work at this department, and they told me that it was a bizarre purchase and that it was out of the ordinary. And they also told me that there are deep concerns about Fukushima. So I wanted to get your take on that. You wouldn't comment on Fukushima, which is fine. But then you also revealed to me that you just work for the federal government. You don't really know what's going on. You're just the purchasing agent, which is fine. I just wanted you to tell me that and talk to me instead of hanging up for, on me because I actually pay your salary, and as do the millions of people that will ultimately hear about this and watch this video. So please give me a call back if you would. Um, if not, we'll just have to go on with the statements that you gave me. Uh, my name's Anthony Gucciardi. You can just call back this number. Um, thanks a lot. I think you should look into Fukushima, really, because even the top scientists who, they're, they're called conservative by the other top scientists, say that for thousands of years we'll be threatened by Fukushima, and if it blows up, it will mean the end of Japan, quote-unquote, bye-bye Japan, and we'll have to evacuate the West Coast. So I don't blame you guys if you're stockpiling the potassium iodide. I don't blame you. That makes sense. That's smart. That's what a good, real government would do is stockpile it for the citizens. My thing is 14 million doses obviously is not enough for the citizens, and it's not even enough for most government since the federal government is now so bloated. So please give me a call back and let me know if you want to clarify your statement. Again, I'm Anthony Gucciardi. Thanks a lot. So give me a call back if you would, please. It seems that the public servant, <clears throat> once again, does not want to talk to us about the open Fed Biz Ops deal where they want 14 million doses of potassium iodide, and he hung up on me for even inquiring about it and talking about Fukushima. And he claimed that it was just a routine purchase. Oh, this happens all the time. It's not a big deal. And then later said, hey, I just work for the federal government. I just purchase stuff. I have no idea what's going on. Wouldn't even talk about Fukushima. And then I said, well, you know, I just want to know about some stuff, and he hung up on me. Goodbye hung up on me. A very good public servant that I pay for to serve this nation, no doubt. 
a federal government agent that is proliferating freedom and liberty throughout this nation. If they wanted to dispel these conspiracy theories that Fukushima exists and that Fukushima is a danger and that a, a real smart government would actually stockpile potassium iodide and more importantly nascent iodine, they would stockpile that. Nascent iodine, of course, you can take every day and prepare yourself. The potassium iodide is for emergencies and actually really bad for you. So a smart, real government would tell its citizens, yes, we're stockpiling this for you and you should get some too. But instead, they're secretly going behind the scenes and ordering tons and tons of it, uh, enough for about 12 million people, or 14 million people, and not telling you any of it. Not telling you about iodine, not telling you anything. So instead of that guy coming forward and saying, yeah, you know, we're doing this for whatever reason, he just blackwalled me and blacklisted me and just completely is now ignoring me and will not answer any phone calls from our number at all. So I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and I encourage you to check out uh, all the information about not only the potassium iodide that the government is ordering, but about Fukushima. Because one way or another, it doesn't even matter why they're ordering it, they should order it for Fukushima and prepare the citizens of this country and worldwide. But Fukushima is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, threats we face today. Unanimously, across the board, the top experts say, yes, it the 1,500 rods that they're extracting now with homeless people cleaning up the site, if one of those rubs against another, it will cause a massive meltdown that will threaten humanity for thousands of years. That's a direct quote, and it would mean bye-bye Japan. So this is serious, this is real, and it's not coming down to these weird losers at the federal government hanging up on me for asking about it. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and keep looking for truth and information.